It's that time again, here I am. It's uh, the week of November 25th. We're gonna take a look at last week's songs, take a listen, I'm gonna give you a little rundown. I think I'm gonna post this one on YouTube, and for those of you that don't know, for the last like month and a half, maybe, maybe two months now it's been, I'm not sure, I've been posting a little rundown of the previous week's worth of songs onto my Patreon site. Patreon, of course, is the place where you can support me every time I post a new one of these. You know, you have the option of, of kicking in a few dollars, um, and in return you get this, this video where I'm talking about, you know, the previous week's worth of songs, and also you get the chance to immediately download any or all of them via a Dropbox link, which is very easy to do. So, um, I'm going to post this one on YouTube because I'd really love uh, to have you over there makes a big difference in my life um, to have all of you watching, listening, um, and to get your support monetarily as well. It makes a huge, huge difference. So, without further ado, the first song from last week, last Monday, was Hypochondria is Contagious. It was a song request by YouTuber Naltz. His real name is Kevin Nalty. I saw a Instagram photo of him in the hospital and he I guess he had got he had like shingles or something um, and I asked him to give me a song request and he said write a song about whether or not hypochondria is contagious and I think maybe he was expecting something funny or something um, but I ended up writing this sort of like weirdly dark song I don't know. It's a, it's cool. I like the first line that I wrote. I was really proud of it. Equip your elf. Bring up your mage its. Clear this thing's contagious. Mage its. I rhyme with contagious, which I was pretty proud of. Um, I kind of liked the way the song came out. It's it's a little blah. It's a little like whatever, but it's nice. That chorus is nice. I'm good at writing choruses. That happens, as we'll see this week. I think I wrote a lot of really good choruses this week. So anyway, that's how this song came about, um, and it is what it is. The next song is about my niece. Well, it's written by my niece, who turned five. She was very. She has this friend named Lucy that she really loves. So she just made up a song about her, as five-year-olds are wont to do. And I really liked it. So we recorded it, and then I made this whole backing track for her. Um, you know, I was at my parents' house when I did this, so I didn't have a, most of my stuff, so I used this little tiny keyboard, like this big, and, um, and that was it. I didn't have any of my other gear. I just had my computer and this little tiny keyboard, and I brought her, her, um, this track of her singing, and then I sort of fudged around with her timing a little bit, um, just so that she was right on the beat. I mean, she was already almost on that beat. She was already almost on, like, the Lucy time, and I heard it had that very, like, kind of this kind of feel. A little bit of this going on. And so I just, you know, moved around a little bit, and then just built a track around it. It was really fun. And weird. Okay, then we get into the two Doctor Who songs, right? So, this first Doctor Who song. A Doctor Who. A Doctor Who. So, I knew I wanted to write a song about the Doctor for the um, 50th anniversary. Huge Doctor Who fan. Loved the special. Oh my god. Um, and a few weeks ago, so I sort of had this in my head, like I needed to write a song about the doctor. A few weeks ago, I was walking down the street, and that 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 chorus melody just kind of came to me. So I just was, you know, do 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 do, I'm walking, and then suddenly it was like, Doctor Who, a Doctor Who, and every time I sing that, I'm almost positive that that is from something that I'm like ripping it off, 
And I really still think that, but nobody said anything. So if you can think of what that is ripping off, tell me. But um, anyway, I really liked it. It's just a little thing, Doctor Who. So I started with that. That was I. That came to me, and that was what I started with. It just was a thing, and I, you know, I just did the whole thing around that. I really like the way this song came out. It's it's sort of appropriately epic. In the sort of minor key, and then I go to the, the relative major here. Oh yeah. Oh, and I did something cool that worked out pretty well. I asked, um, m many of you commented, I asked on Twitter and Facebook, um, you know, what, what do you want me to mention? in a Doctor Who song, and people just gave me everything that they would want, and it was very helpful. Um, like I said, I'm a huge fan, but it was really helpful to like, oh yeah, I should put that in, oh yeah, I should put that in. It was very easy at that point just to plug all these different ideas into it. Um, because I had written, I actually wrote the second verse first, and it was much more specific about what I thought the day of the Doctor, the episode, the 50th um, anniversary special episode was going to be about. I sort of wrote what I thought would be sort of a recap. Um, but then I had no idea what to write for another verse, and then everyone gave me all of this, these ideas, and it really helped. So, um, thank you, and I'm really happy with the way that came out. And one thing that somebody suggested was you should make a song that just goes through all of the doctors and describes each one of them. And I was like, oh my god, that's such a good idea. So First that's, what, stole the TARDIS that's what I did the second doctor song, the second day. This one's a little rough. Uh, you know, it's hard to take so much content and, and make it completely interesting. Um, you know, I often also obviously struggle with time constraints. Um, uh, I don't remember, I guess this was Thursday or Friday that I, I guess it was Thursday that I was writing that. Um, I don't remember exactly what was going on that day, but it seems like I wasn't able to get started on it until pretty late in the day. Um, and, you know, 11 doctors, 11 and a half doctors, it's a lot to write about, and I wanted to give each doctor a verse. Um, the other thing about this song, that in the recording of it, um, I set it up so that I had a couple microphones recording me in addition to the camera microphone. Um, but the main thing with this kind of thing is I really wish that I could memorize the whole thing so that I could look in the camera the entire time that I'm singing the song. And I think that would have made a really big difference in the presentation of the song. Um, Mike Rognetta of the of Idea Channel, a friend of mine, suggested, you know, making a, um, a teleprompter, which you can do with an iPad or a laptop and a, um, and a piece of, uh, of the right kind of glass. So I think I might do that, because I think that would make a big difference in some of these songs where it's just me playing. If I could look right at the camera um, and sing it to you, uh, I think that would make a huge difference, actually. Rather than I'm like, you know, the, the, my computer's right here and I'm looking at the computer and sometimes I'm looking up. So, maybe that will happen. I hope that it will. That sounds like a project that I will have to do. Um, so, then, next we have uh, this song called Find It. You'll find it in that. I really like this song. It has sort of a, I don't know if it's a weird time signature, I'm definitely doing something funny. These days fly by, and the details are scarce. Um, not much to say about it. Another really catchy chorus. Where is it? Yeah. So I'll probably come back to this one at some point. I feel like there's a lot here to mine and make better. Um, I feel like the verses got worse as it went on. The first couple of verses are really great, and then it started to get late, and I was getting tired, and I was just like, ah, I have to finish this song. So I just sort of threw out some verses, wrote them without really considering them, and, um, you know, I would go back and rewrite them. But the general structure and the chorus is great. Um, I've been, this week I've been really influenced by, I got linked to this guy named Francis Starlight, something something, um, who, he has a, he has a, you know, a thing called Francis and the Lights, 
Um, he's a singer, songwriter, dude, guy. Really quite amazing. Um, and uh, well respected, but maybe not quite, um, you know, hasn't broken out yet. And I think it's only a matter of time. But I've just been kind of a, a little bit obsessed with his 2010 album that he put out. I forget the name of it, but I've been listening to it kind of nonstop. And um, the thing that I really like about his music, if you want to check him out, Francis and the Lights, just look at him on the old internet. Um, he has a lot of space. There's a lot of space in his music. And um, he does really interesting things while while remaining super poppy and catchy and, and listenable. Um, and that's really influenced me this week. I've been sort of trying for that, aiming for this sense of some, especially in the last few songs that I did last week, is like aiming for to put some space in them. Um, lyrically, he's really good. Um, he, he has a, that exact kind of lyrical thing that I love, which is sort of concrete, but but not definite, you know, um, and I, it's, I, I love it, and, uh, and there's just, if you listen to the, his songs, there's like space between, not only is there space in the music, it sort of breathes and every note is exactly where it should be, but there's space in his melodies and his, um, writing, um, just, f like, like, physically in the song, it's like, he sings a bit, and then there's all this space, and then he sings a bit more, I don't know really how else to explain it, but I really love it, um, and it creates this sense of tension and release that is amazing. Um, so I've been trying to aim for that. Um, I got together with my buddy Eric Strom, who uh, we did a song together um, with his, our other friend Tyler a few weeks ago called Down the Street Friends Are Making Out. I don't know if that got, if I talked about that one or not. Anyway, we got together um, and worked on a song. Um, my hope is that he'll be starting to produce um, some of my songs. Um, Production-wise, he's really good, and he kind of has that that um, ability to really hone in and focus on a thing um, and find exactly the right notes and stuff. Anyway, we worked on this song together called I I "In the Morning." And, you know, given, given what I was feeling and, and how much I was ad admiring this guy Francis, um, I was sort of aiming, I was aiming for that with this song, um, particularly. I I and I think we, I think we did a pretty good job, you know, I think it's, you know, it, it, we definitely made it in a day, and I think that it could definitely be improved, but it's a really good song. Um, tell you what to do. So anyway... If you listen to Francis and the Lights, you'll hear maybe how I was inspired with this song. Um, like this song. That's definitely one that, that I'm going to come back to. And then the next day, the song that I wrote last night called Don't Answer That. Um, same thing. The sort of strange, a, a bit of a strange structure going on. Um, Right? And then there's all the space. Okay, and then there's more space. It just, there's something about that. I, I tend, I, I think I tend to go towards more stringing a lot of words together. Um, there's a sort of Dylan-esque thing about what I do, you know, there's, th th that's my main influence going way back, so I sort of revert to that. Um, but putting, I don't even know what that is about songwriting when you put a lot of space. Maybe there's a name for that. But um, this song definitely had it as well. And then it had these, and then it had three sections, all of which I think they were really strong. Nobody tastes quite like you in the garden. Right, and then it builds. Definitely coming back to this one too. They left off. chorus. Really good choruses this week. This chorus actually, sometimes you just play some chords and you just start singing gobbledygook. You know, and you just do that for a while and you do it long enough and you'll end up with, you know, do you feel that? No, don't answer that. Do you, you know, and just, it comes, it just comes naturally, and that's a really great way to do it. Um, 
So, you know, it runs the gamut. You, however you're going to get there, you're going to get there. Um, with the Doctor Who song, it just came while I was walking down the street. With this song, I had this chord progression, and I just kept singing gobbledygook over it until it formed into words that made sense and sounded good and had a feeling. Sometimes, sometimes it's not so much about the meaning, right? It's like a dream. It's about the feeling that you're trying to get. And uh, if the words evoke the feeling, then you've done your job. So, uh, all in all, good week. Good job. Good job, team. Give yourself a, a, a round of applause. Pat yourself on the back. Um, I do not have a smoothie, once again. Normally these end with me saying, drink more smoothie. But uh, we're so sort of still disorganized here after just having moved that um, I have not gotten back into my smoothie routine, which is bad. But I do have water, so drink more water. It's very important. And, uh... Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, please uh, consider heading on over to Patreon and kicking in a few bucks for these. Um, and if you're watching this on Patreon, thanks so much. And that's all she wrote on the camera.